What's up, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest will be fighting Benito Lopez at UFC Vegas 64 on November 5th. Please today to be joined by Mario Batista. Mario, thanks for being here, man. Appreciate the time. Oh, not a problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, no problem at all. And let's get right into things here. Uh, big opportunity for you here in your career to get on a three-fight winning streak here in the UFC. Just What's been clicking for you these last few outings? Because you're on a two-fight win streak, wins in four of your last five. Of course, the win here gives you three in a row, puts you in a great spot. So just what's kind of been clicking over the, the course of the last uh, year or two? Uh, I think it's just how I've been training. You know, I've, I've just found a really good, efficient way to train and learn at the same time. You know, I'm not always going hard. I'm really taking advantage of the times between fights, learning, and really taking it easy, you know, on my body and letting my mind work a lot more. And then once it comes down to fight time at the camps, you know, I'm zoned in and, and I'm ready to go. And one of the things too about a fighter like you that I love to watch is the fact that you're very long for your division. And I always tell everybody, like if you had to ask me, what would the perfect fighter be? You kind of do talk about those, like those Anderson Silvas and Izzy's and John Jones and people that are built, you know, those real tall and lanky guys. And you kind of had that same built, you're tall and long, but there is then the element of you have to be able to use your length the correct way. Uh, just talk about that a little bit, being a guy that's that's so big for the division and how you're able to utilize length to your advantage because it's it's not an easy thing to do. It really, I mean, of course, every fighter coming in knows that they're going to be at a disadvantage there, so they're going to work to not let you get going. So it it's, obviously is a little bit of a, a chess battle there, but once you figure it out, man, you really get rolling. Yeah, you know, it's you have more distance and it's ideal for both striking and like your groundwork jujitsu. You have more leverage. Um, yeah. Coach, I always says that about jujitsu, like the longer guys, like they could do things that, you know, the guys with short legs or short arms can't do. Uh, but even in this fight, like I'm, I'm going to be the one that's shorter. So I'm definitely have to make some adjust in, adjustments and uh, fight like a shorter fighter for this one. I say, have you ever had this happen before that you're going to be at a, maybe a little size disadvantage for a change? Is the first time this has ever happened? Yeah, as far as like height and, and length, uh, no, no, no. I, I fought San Hagen and he was taller. Yeah, he's and, a tall, long guy too, yeah. And longer too. So, no, but I didn't get a real good chance to prepare for that. So this camp, I'm really having, you know, a good camp, uh, preparing well for it and getting that good look that, you know, that we all need. Uh, to face someone like that. And we're going to get into camp in just a second. I do have a question about the MMA lab before we talk camp. So you were born in Nevada. Now, obviously, whenever somebody hears Nevada, they think of Las Vegas. They think that Vegas is the center of it. Well, obviously, Vegas is actually the bottom of the state. So, I mean, the state does cover a lot of ground, too. But obviously, anybody that would see anybody being born in Nevada, they would assume immediately, like, oh, they're going to have to train in Las Vegas, of course. But you obviously do not. You went down to MMA lab in Arizona. Just talk about that decision as to picking that gym and starting to call that place home. Yeah, I was born in northern Nevada. So I'm about 60 miles away from Oregon. So I'm at the very top, small little mining town. Um, and there's a bunch of little little mining towns around the area. So it was pretty small. Uh, my gym got shut down in Winnemucca, Nevada. That's where I'm from. Got shut down. So I made my way down to Phoenix. I had a list of all these gyms I was going to check out. And uh, I went to the MMA lab first. And I just love the environment there. I love Coach. I love the way he talked to his fighters. And uh, a really good family environment So uh, and team environment. So that I got there and decided to stay. All right, so now let's talk about camps. So you mentioned about how you found the MMA lab. Obviously, things have been cooking for you uh, since you've been there. You're obviously off to a great start in your career here. Uh, just talking now about training camp and how that's been going. It's been going good. You know, I got like a good look um, helping out Sean O'Malley for his fight coming up. So I got a good test of like finding that range with, on a taller fighter. And uh, he recently took off. So I transitioned to other guys and you know, it's just all about figuring out that distance. I love this camp. You know, it's it's different than the ones I've had before. All the other guys I fought before were very similar. So it's kind of getting uh, monotonous, you know. So this one, different challenges. And, and I'm excited. You know, I'm I definitely growing through this camp. And I'm excited to showcase uh, November 5th. 
And I know you had mentioned earlier in the interview about how you're starting to really, you know, learn about how like the proper things to do in between each fight and really enjoying that time and using it to grow and evolve and whatnot. Well, obviously this is your third fight of the year. So not a super lot of time in between fights. You've been pretty active this year. So uh, just how's the body holding up too? It's not an easy thing to go through three fights. I mean, you really have to be on point with your recovery with, to, to pull off something like that where you get three fights in a year. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, the between camps and I don't do much. I, I go back to training pretty quick so it's just about you know protecting your body and learning through that process uh through those uh you know gaps between fights and i think i've really found like a a good way to learn and train at the same time and maintain like good cardio and um yeah it's just uh it's been working out for me all right so now let's talk about your opponent a little bit just what have you seen out of him as you've been scouting him and uh, what are you kind of expecting on fight night and how do you see this fight playing out yeah, he's definitely like a tall, rangier fighter. So obviously working to to close that gap. Um, yeah, I, there's not much on him. I don't know if he's gotten any better, but I can only work off of you know his past fights, and so that's what I'm going off of. And I'm assuming he's going to be the best version of that. So uh, yeah, been doing that, and I've also been working on myself too. You know, it, I've focused on him, but I'm also growing in my own way, and uh, I think he's. I think they're going to be very surprised uh, on November 5th for the fight. And now, like we said when we opened, right, if you were to get a win here, it puts you on a three-fight win streak. Uh, obviously, would give you wins in like five of your last six fights. Obviously, a lot of momentum there. Where do you think this a win will kind of put you in the division? You think that you'd get, get a number next to your name or get a ranked opponent? Of course, the we know that the Bantamweight division is obviously loaded and uh, one of the best divisions, if not the best division in the whole entire uh, UFC. So where do you think it kind of puts you into the, the mix of things with all, everything going on? Yeah, well, it, it all depends on how the performance goes. You know, if I go out there and, and start them in the first round, you know, I, I'm going to be asking for a, a top 15 or some are very close to it, you know, and I think that's what I deserve. I think that's the next logical step in my, in my career. You know, um, this dream doesn't last forever. So I, I really want to get into it and start finding these top guys while I'm kind of entering into my, uh, my, my prime. So hopefully good performance and, uh, next the top 15 guy. All right, a few future matchups here. Well, by future, I mean like very, very, very near future because they're uh, happening this weekend. I know you mentioned about uh, Sean O'Malley before getting to work with him. Obviously, big matchup there with uh, Pewter Jan. I believe Dana White said earlier this week it's a title elimination fight. Just want to get your thoughts on that matchup. Uh, man, I, I think it's going to be a, a good fight. You know, Sean's been working very hard. He's pushed the extra this camp. I could tell he's definitely training you know, to be a champion. So uh, I'm going to back Sean all the way. And hopefully we have, uh, like everyone's been saying, uh, uh, Conor McGregor, Jose Aldo kind of kind of thing going on here where he, you know, beats him, either knocks him out or beats him a decision. And, you know, hopefully he gets that title shot afterwards. I said, what's it been like getting to work with him too? He has to be quite the teammate. Obviously, we know uh, personality-wise, it's obviously have to be you know through the you know through the roof with the personality. But obviously, he's he's one hell of a fighter too. He's really good. He's very well rounded. Just what's it like being able to call him a teammate and getting to work with him all the time? Oh, it's been great. I've been, I think we've been together for about, I think eight nine years now. We showed up at the MMA lab around the same time. And I can tell you, he's, he's always been like that. You know, it's just like now he has like the funds and the platform to kind of express that a little bit more. Uh, but he's always been like that. Uh, but when it comes to training, like I said, for this camp, it, he's very serious in what he does. And he takes everything, um, you know, everything from sleep to sparring. He takes everything very serious. And uh, he's a, definitely a businessman and he gets to work when, it, when the time needs to be. And then just the other matchup I wanted to ask you about, we know that we just said, right, if Sean's to get the win, he gets the winner of the title fight this weekend, Aljamain Sterling, TJ Dillashaw. Uh, I know that Dillashaw is a little bit older nowadays, right? I think he's 38. He's creeping up to the uh, close to retirement type of an age there. But uh, still, nonetheless, he's still effective. He's had a great career, uh, tough opponent there. Just want to get your thoughts on, on that matchup because I, I think it's going to be a fun fight. I'm really curious to see how that one plays out. Yeah, I think I, I think it's going to be a good fight. I, I have Aljo in that fight. I think um, TJ is going to be definitely uh, avoiding the wrestling, and uh, you know I think Aljo is going to be pretty effective. And if he gets some takedowns and he gets on your back, it's going to be very hard to get him off. 
So uh, I have Aljo. He looked very impressive in his last fight, made some changes. Um, and, uh, yeah, I have I have Aljo on that one. Yeah, yeah, it seems like uh, he's the betting favorite there for a reason. He did look great in that, that last outing. It's going to be a fun uh, fun card this weekend, though. A couple weeks, a couple great fights uh, coming up here. A lot of great fight cards coming up for the UFC here. But uh, anyway, man, really appreciate all the time here today. Just last thing before you roll out, uh, social media, management, sponsors, anybody you got to give shout-outs to, take it away. Yeah, I just want to give a shout-out to, uh, to my team, the MMA Lab, you know, John Crouch and the team for helping me out get through this camp, and we'll get the W uh, – November 5th. And if you want to follow me on social media, it's Mario underscore Bautista. And uh, yeah, look me up. All right, Mario, thanks so much for all the time, man. Really appreciate it. Again, to everybody that's watching out there, just to remind you, Mario fights Benito Lopez at UFC Vegas 64. That fight dates November 5th. Those fights, of course, take place in the UFC Apex in Las Vegas. So anyway, Mario, thanks so much for all the time, man. Really appreciate it. Appreciate everyone that watched today's interview. If you liked today's interview, make sure you go to the bottom, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, and keep an eye out for MyMMANews.com. Great stuff comes out there every day of the week. Also, go to our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Log on there. Give us a like and a follow on there as well. We'll see you later, everybody.